protecting your peace is so important. I don't care if it's your friend. I don't care if it's a brother of yours, like a sibling, a parent. You got to protect your peace, man. It's 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 so major. If you're trying to accomplish anything in this world, you got to make sure that um, your peace comes first. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to just cut everybody off, but you got to learn the skill of either, you know, altering relationships or deleting relationships. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode from the Boys to Men Show brought to you by the Squire Program. I'm your host, Layden Cook. And man, today we're going to talk about your peace, protecting your peace, man. It's it's a major, major thing that people I don't think think about, you know, uh, enough anyways. Um, when you're dealing with drama, you're dealing with the chaos of life, you're dealing with, you know, life ambushes, as Bedros likes to say, it's um, life can get chaotic. And so you got to you got to protect your peace by any means. We're going to talk about that, man. And the reason I thought of this episode and why I thought it was good to talk about is because I thought about, you know, a couple years ago, I had a I had a really good homie. Right. And uh, to just summary the story up, we're not homies anymore because of the situation. This kind of goes into protecting your peace. And we were good friends. We hang out all the time. When I was skating all the time, like we would skate together. We'd go, you know, uh, shop, get clothes. We'd go whatever. We were like, we we're boys, right? And uh, I noticed he was kind of being shady. He was trying to, he was kind of like, you know, starting to hide things, lying about things. And it was kind of weird. Like, bro, we're boys. Like, why are you, you don't have to lie about stuff like that, right? And then later I find out that uh, he was, he was being weird with me like that because he was dating two girls at the same time. Like literally had two whole relationships the girls didn't know about it. Uh, he was the only one who knew about it, of course. I didn't know about it. And he was being weird around me because he knew my morals and how I cared myself and what was important to me. And so he was kind of like, you know, feeling like maybe guilty or something around me or feeling like, you know, uh, uh, just kind of like awkward, right? Because he knew where I stood on things like that, cheating and and uh, those kinds of things, right? You get what I'm trying to say. And so, um, man, I had to, uh, I didn't really announce it. Like, yeah, we're not friends anymore. Like I didn't, I don't, you don't have to make it a big thing about that, but I did have to kind of cut him off, bro. I, I don't, I don't, you know, respect men that can't be honest with, you know, especially their peers, but you can't be, you know, uh, uh, honest with your, your, your girl or, or whoever else. Like a man needs to have the confidence to be able to be honest with the person, whether they're, they're going to like the response or not. And, uh, I noticed that that was a big quality about him that he kind of was like a habitual liar and I couldn't you know, be around that. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about today is protecting your peace is so important. I don't care if it's your friend. I don't care if it's a brother of yours, like a sibling, a parent, like you got to protect your peace, man. It's, it's, it's so major. If you're trying to accomplish anything in this world, you got to make sure that um, your peace comes first. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to just cut everybody off, but you got to learn the skill of either, you know, altering relationships or deleting relationships. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And so, you know, like I said, man, keeping a toxic relationship is or, or holding grudges too is another one. Like holding grudges, though, those things are only holding you back. Like that's it. And this is actually why um, the number one reason why I, I actually forgave my dad after all those years. For anybody who doesn't know the story, uh, my dad got arrested when I was 10 months old. He just came home in 2020. I was 24 at the time. And, um, you know, I, there was a lot of time lost, like a lot of time of, you know, a lot of things that he missed, you know, my high school graduation, my wedding, you know, getting promoted in school, at competitions when I was skating, all that stuff. There's a lot of reasons that I could, you know, be upset with him or even, you know, it could be easier for me to hate him, to be honest with you. We didn't have a relationship outside of his situation being in prison all those years. And so, um, you know, that could have been very easy for me to do to just kind of forget about it and be like, I don't need to build a relationship with him now. Why well, do I need to do that? And so, um, but protecting my peace meant that I need to forgive him. I don't want to hold a grudge and, and, and have this negative, you know, energy or this poison that's only really hurting me. Like, yeah, it would hurt him too, but it's really, you know, hurting me holding on to that. Uh, that's not going to do me any, any good, especially the life that I want to live one day, which is, you know, um, a very successful life above average, you know, because I want to be able to help, you know, donate to different charities and be able to help people and make content and be positive. But if I'm making content about don't hold grudges and, 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 you know, um, things like that, then I can't do that myself. And so I got to make sure I practice what I preach. And so that's a big reason why I forgave my dad, protecting my peace and making sure that we had, you know, um, uh, like a, a grounds to, to stand on and fix our relationship because that was a big deal. And so, how do you protect your peace then? There's a couple points. I have four four big points. Um, number one, like I said in the beginning, learning how to either alter or delete relationships altogether. Alter, altering or tailoring a relationship basically just means, you know, hey, with, with my with my homie, like I said earlier, he was, you know, dating two different girls um, and I wasn't cool with that. I don't rock with people who do things like that. It could have been, 
I could have, instead of deleted their, deleting their relationship altogether, I could have just said, um, you know, kind of just stop hitting him up as often. You know, we're still boys. We still talk every once in a while, but, you know, I don't really hit him up to skate anymore. We kind of like, if I run into him, I run into him at the skate park. We'll see. Um, or um, every once in a while, you know, checking on him, make sure he's good, whatever. That's kind of like still keeping the relationship, but you're just, you, you kind of take, take a step back for a little bit. Um, and so you can kind of love them from afar, so to speak. Deleting it is self-explanatory. It just means that you stop hitting them up all together. Um, or maybe it's a little bit more dramatic. You actually have a conversation say, man, I don't rock with that. I don't, I can't have people like that in my tribe, in my circle. And so, um, yeah, man, it wasn't cool. You know, whatever, we just kind of go separate ways, right? So those are two different ways you can deal with it, but those are really big things and a skill that everyone needs to master because you're going to always come across people that, you know, either don't align with your values or morals or, um, or quite frankly, just don't care about your values or morals and they just kind of do their thing. And so you got to learn how to either alter the relationship. Like if it's family, you can't always cut family off, um, or delete it all together. So that's a big one. Number two is pay attention to what your triggers are. Like if you know that there's certain things that, you know, or certain situations that, uh, trigger you more than others, then don't put yourself in those situations. Like if you're, if we're, if the topic is protecting your peace, if you know that, you know, um, talking to this person about this topic is something that they always get worked up and riled up. And that also gets you riled up and you guys get in a fight, whatever, then don't talk to that person about that specific topic. Um, avoid it by all, by all means, like talk to them about something else. Um, Bedros always shares the example where he would say like when he was on the climb of trying to become a better entrepreneur, when he'd go and visit his, his parents, like things were doing pretty well for him. Um, he'd tell him about the ideas that he had with business and, you know, do I think I'm going to donate a, 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 I think it was like a Cadillac one time at one event he had, and I want to do this, I want to do that. And all they saw was liabilities. He sees it as like, dude, I'm killing it, man. Like, this is going to be dope. Like, I think this is going to get people excited. It's going to get people to, you know, sign up for whatever the product is, right? Uh, but they're seeing it as like, dude, that's a lot of money. You're going to give a freaking car away, like tens of thousands of dollars. You know what you could do with that money? Like they see it as completely different, right? They don't have the same mindset as he does. And so he had to tailor that relationship where when he'd go to visit his parents, he wouldn't talk to them about that. He would talk to them about, you know, how's the garden doing? How is this doing? How's this going? Right. And so that's what you got to do, man. That's what you got to do. So pay attention what your triggers are. If you know what's going to upset you or what's going to be a problem, then you need to learn how to you know, uh, avoid that by all means. Uh, number three is only run with people that have similar values as you do. If you haven't noticed already, this is kind of a, uh, a common, common denominator in this episode, man, like making sure you're rolling with people that have the same values and morals and uh, things like that as you do. Because if you don't, it's a slippery slope, man. If I'm going and hanging out with my boys, like me as a married man, if I'm going to hang out with my boys who are single and I want to go to a Vegas trip, and you know, it's bro, they're going to do the Vegas trip way different than I would as a married man. Like they're they're trying to go to the club. They're trying to do this. They're hollering at girls on the strip, whatever. Like me being there with them is very, you can slip into a, a, a bad situation very easily. You know what I'm saying? Especially if the girl knows that you're taken. some girls get turned on by that. They want to go after you more. Like they don't care about your single homies. They want to go after you, the one who's committed, the one who has a family at home, just to challenge, just to do it. And so, um, don't hang around people that, that don't have the same, you know, the same, uh, situation as you, especially in a situation like that or values and morals. Like I said, number four and last one is find your passion and spend more time developing self mastery. So, you know, when it comes to, um, protecting your peace, this is a big one because, if you can find what you're passionate about, if you find something that brings you joy, that makes you happy, a hobby of yours, that can kind of like, you know, like some people like art and they start drawing and, you know, they put their head down to start, you know, you know, putting the, putting the pencil to the paper and they look up and four hours have went by. Cause it's like, that's their thing. Like they love it. It's happy for them. Like that's their, their time, right? Some people it's drawing, some people it's music, some people it's, you know, whatever it is. Right. And so, um, find that, figure out what that is and just spend time developing that. And that's going to be, that's going to bring a lot of peace to your life, man. Like that's, that's where you should, um, that's where the work really begins. Like self mastery is, is one of the biggest ways to protect your peace. Because if you don't have anything to kind of pour into, you're kind of always going to be plugging yourself into other things. And some of those outlets are not going to be good for you. There's going to be unnecessary drama that you walk into, but if you can focus on yourself and be happy with being by yourself and working on, you know, self mastery, then you'll always be able to find peace with the person that matters the most, which is you, man. So anyways, um, this is a really important episode for me personally, because I've had dozens of situations like that where I found myself either having to alter or delete relationships um, or where I need to lean more into self mastery and learn how to develop my skill and, and hone in on my, my abilities a little bit more. 
um, or, you know, any of the other things I said, like paying attention to my triggers and getting away from certain people or certain, certain situations. And it's all because we want to become better men, right? That's the reason why you subscribe to us or you click this video in the first, first place because you want to become a better man. Then these are things that you have to do and master in order to become that. And so anyways, guys, we appreciate you for watching all the way through. Um, do us a favor, man. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this message with somebody who uh, maybe it reminded you of. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.